Hey buddy, I'm Tim the Trucker. Now, I know you're sitting at home or at your apartment because you're watching YouTube, which means you got to have an internet access. You're not out on the road, so you're probably thinking about going out onto the road. Now, before you make a commitment to becoming a truck driver, I thought maybe I should show you around my pad here so you know exactly what you're getting into. This is Operation CDL, and I'm Tim the Trucker. All right, this is the sleeper berth. Now, as you can tell, it's a twin bed. A little cabinet area here for a television if you want to bring in a portable television. Down below, that's your closet. You have couple shelves here and then another little shelf up on top. Now let me step back here so you can see the floor. I put my shoes out. As you can tell I got two shoes in one direction, two shoes in the other direction. So you can see that the depth of the floor space in front of the bed is two feet deep and about two and a half, almost three feet wide. So that's the only area you have to turn around in. I step back and I turn around and then here's the driving console. And that's it. Basically the sleeper berth is nothing more than a closet space. So when you're getting ready to go out and drive a truck, you have to ask yourself, do you really want to sacrifice your home or your apartment and live in a space no larger than a walk-in closet for the rest of your career? You know, it's, it's, people don't tell you exactly what you're getting into, and then you want to make a commitment to go through a driving school, and once you have that financial obligation, all of a sudden you're stuck in something that you discover you don't like. And that's why driving schools are so, uh, how should we say, not necessarily popular because a lot of people go through them and then resent it. But, uh, you know, they, they are growing. And, and the reason for that is people will go through the school, they'll get into the truck, they'll be out there for a few weeks, and then say, hey, this is something I never even expected. This is something I don't want. And when you're talking to the employers out there, you should say, ask them, hey, I have a nice apartment or I have a nice house. And now you want me to live in your truck. How much extra are you going to compensate me for that sacrifice? Right now, they don't do that. You know, the, the trucking companies, they want to promote this idea that they're giving you a good wage, which they're not. But then they don't talk about the sacrifices that you have to make. They don't talk about you only coming home once every two weeks to visit the family for just basically 24 to 36 hours. You can't be a father. 
can't be a spouse, you're basically going to be a glorified uncle, somebody that comes in for Sunday dinner once every few weeks, and that's it. You're not going to have a relationship with your children. So you have to sacrifice your family if you want a trucking career, and you have to sacrifice the comforts of a civil lifestyle. Because you're not going to have an apartment, and you're not going to be in a house day after day, night after night. You're going to be in a truck just like this one with a twin bed and a, a, th a two by three foot area to turn around. It's, you know, basically it's a walk-in closet. So ask, ask those trucking companies when, when, when they're trying to recruit you, ask them, you know, if I have to sacrifice my house and my apartment and live in a closet attached to the back of the truck, that's a significant sacrifice. How much extra are you going to compensate me for that? And what you're going to find out is they're going to tell you, you just don't have the right attitude to be a trucker. And that tells you they're just looking for gullible people. So, you know, if you want to be gullible, and come on out. Here's, here's something else. There wasn't any bathroom as you can see in, in the sleeper, you know, and usually all I do is I step out the door, but, uh, you know, when, when I was uh, working for night transportation, my job was to go out and repossess abandoned trucks. People would start driving them, they'd find out that the trucking career just wasn't for them, and they'd abandon the truck. And then all these major trucking companies, just like Knight, they have to have a repo man, someone like myself, who goes out and repossesses these lost trucks. And time after time after time, when I'd get into these abandoned trucks, you'd find little bottles. And these little bottles are full of urine. You know, that's what most truckers do as their bathroom, is they piss in a bottle. And that's going to be your life as a trucker. You know, what I've seen many, many times is people will start with these little bottles like that, and then they have to graduate it to something bigger. A lot of times they'll have a, a one-gallon bottle from a, a windshield wiper fluid or something like that, and that's what they urinate in. And you know, these truckers are kind of a low-class lot. They think it's, you know, it's it's something to to collect their urine, and they want to see how much they can collect. And so they'll get these bottles, and they'll just urinate them, and, and see. You know, try to fill up the bottle. Then you get another one and you fill that one up. You know, that's your life. That's going to be your life as a trucker. Sleeping in a little closet attached to the back of the truck and collecting piss in bottles. If that's the lifestyle you want, come on out. But if if you want something a little bit more for your life, then stay away from trucking.